I want to thank the Yorks and the Kesslers for being here. To, uh, these sort of things are really important to us, is to, uh, and thank you for making it uh, important to you to be here to, to witness these things. It's never easy raising the family. On best, at best, it's not easy. And so we just want to give everybody all the tools and all the stuff that we can to, uh, to help. And I think the first thing is we need to get our children to know who Jesus Christ is. So when that time comes, not if the time comes, but when, they will know who to turn to, who to and who to, uh, you know, who to seek. Uh, we do have s- uh, bulletins that were handed out. I won't go through all of them, but uh, the announcements are um, the praise team and worship team is on Wednesday at 7. Um, Thursday, there's Kids Club and a Christmas skit practice at 7, not 7.30. Oh, at 7 to 7.30. Okay, it's in the bulletin. The only thing that's not in the bulletin that we need to write in there is the ladies' Bible study will be on Wednesday at 9. 9.30. Do <laughs> you just want to come and do them? Don't everybody miss Joellen doing the announcements? See? Hey, we don't want to forget next Sunday at 10 o'clock, the Sunday school. We've been in Revelations. The more, the more people we can get in here, the more confusing we can have it. So we welcome, we welcome you all. Um, and uh, worship, of course, will be at 11-ish. I don't know why we put 11. That's just sort of misleading. It's 11-ish. Uh, but don't forget next week is potluck. And it'll be the last potluck for Christmas, so maybe we just turn it into a little Christmas dinner if you guys want to. Um, but please come. Even if you don't want to cook anything, come anyways, because we got a lot of great cooks who, who seem to know how to cook for armies. So anyways, uh, December 5th, Sunday night class tonight. Tonight's going to be the first night that we're going to start um, the four seasons of marriage. So, so please, uh, tonight we'll be at 7 o'clock here tonight. We'll try to just keep it an hour, and uh, we'll, we'll get some things worked out. And then next week we'll get, we'll get rolling next week for sure. Um, there's the prayer requests up here. We've got Carl. Carl, it's good to see you this he was here this morning. Oh, there you are. <laughs> it's good to see you this morning, Carl. We've got Lisa Gray, Chantel Chase, Phyllis, Phyllis Eager. She's still mending well. Good. Um, you have Steve McConnell, Diana Art, who's, who's here today. And uh, what's a blessing? Because it uh, could have been, been a lot different story. You know, so God has definitely been, and we want to be praying for Stan Clinton. What's going on with Stan? Really? Okay. We'll be praying for Stan. And, uh, anyway. Sure. Well, that's a plus. Good. 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 And, and he's healing. Right. Good, good, good. Well, good. Well, is there, uh, is there anything else that we don't have on here that we need to put on here? Thank you. I, <laughs> we sang a song. Uh, okay, would I, Bobby just informed me that uh, they're going to have every young man's battle starting on Friday at 7 o'clock here at the church. So uh, please mark that in your bulletin and make every effort to bring your children here to that again. I can't say enough about how uh, important it is that we teach our young people as early as we can especially the men, uh, about purity, sexual purity. I know that's kind of a, you know, there's a lot of little ears in here, but it's the real world. 
uh, sexual purity is, is huge. And that's what this, is, this material is all about for the young men. And so I encourage you, if you haven't got your young men signed up, please sign them up, get a book, and then uh, get them here on, at 7 o'clock on Friday and uh, see what happens. I mean, what have we got to lose? It's either us educating them or else one of their buddies at school is going to do it or the Internet's going to do it. Something's going to do it. They're going to get educated one way or the other. That's just a fact. And so I hope that you guys will allow us to, uh, well, to indoctrinate them a little bit if that's what we need to do. All right, is there anything else that I missed? Birthdays. Is there any birthdays this last week? No birthdays? Okay. Did your birthday? Oh, Mike had a birthday. I didn't think you had. Oh, okay. What do you got? Amen. Good. Good. All right. Mike? Yeah, you're not. Nice try. Is there any anniversaries while we're waiting for Pokey to get up here? Any anniversaries done? It's just me and you, buddy. You know what? When they were in high school, these kids walked around that I thought was kind of funny. They had, a, they had shirts that said, Jesus saves, look at me. I thought that's what it said. Almost like, just like it. My, my nerd D&D. No, good day, Don. Well, Mike, how old are you, buddy? Going to be? be 35. That's cute, isn't it? <laughs> 35, wow. So, lots happened being 34 this last year, right? What was, what was kind of like a highlight? Um, well, you know, we rearranged our living situation a little bit, so getting all that dialed in and, and processing has been quite the, quite the ordeal, still working on it, but that's kind of seemed like what we've been nonstop doing is, is adapting for this last year. Oh, right on. But we survived. You survived, and... Now you moved into a little bigger house. You got got some things going on. So, uh, what do you think? What are you hoping for this next year? Being thirty-five, what would you like to be the aha thing? You know. Um. Really, I mean, watch, watching the boys grow is, is an amazing thing, and just you know, seeing those moments of maturity and knowing that it is possible, and reserving that <laughs> that knowledge on those moments of not so maturity, and you know, just just hoping there to to guide them and. And put them where God wants them to be. Perfect. So do you have a new appreciation for your mom and dad? Yes. Yeah. That usually they happens. Get away with a lot more. <laughs> well, you didn't you didn't grow up with the fun Nazis, what I understand. <laughs> you know, truth be told, I'm actually the voice of stop doing that. Ah, well. <laughs> well, it's always been fun calling her the fun Nazi, so well, Mike, we just appreciate. Mike does so many things here, just not the music. He does so many things behind the scenes that it's, uh, it's it, you know, I just don't know where we would be. Well, you know where we would be is we'd be spending a lot of money on other people who can do what Mike can do. And so uh, we, just, we just love you, man. And it's been fun watching uh, you and Kimber grow, your family grow. And you guys are just a, uh, such a vital part of what's going on out here at the church. And so we love you very much. Feelings mutual. You want to uh, sing happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday, Mike. Love you, <laughs> love you too. Woohoo! Channel 4, many more. All right, if you guys have got something for the youngins to go. Children, be, be gentle.
<laughs> okay. We'll just turn it up. We'll just turn it up. All right. Um, with the rest of you, let's just bow our heads real fast and go before the Lord. Father God, you know, we thank you for your grace today. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for uh, loving us. Your word says that you love the world so much, which means that you love every soul that's, that's taken breath. You've had, uh, you played a part in and you love. Your word says you love us so much that you sent your son to die for us. So today, Lord, we ask that you would steal our minds, calm our hearts, and uh, allow us to be receptive to your word that you speak to your people. Uh, Father, we just, again, love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Last week, <coughs> we, we did something that I've never done, and we started doing the, the Advent. We started talking about the Advent. I'm kind of glad I did. I've, I've uh, never done it before for whatever reasons. But last week, we talked about uh, uh, the Advent candles. We talked about hope. Um, we talked about hope in the returning Savior. In a time that seems so hopeless, doesn't some, we, we look around, doesn't it just seem so hopeless for so many people today? Um, you know, uh, that was what we talked about as we lit the first candle. You know, uh, and listen, we're, as true Christians today, as June Hunt would say, true authentic Christians, because I do think we have people who claim to be Christians because they're Americans, that's really not Christian. Okay, an authentic Christian is someone who, who uh, embraces Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, who, uh, who prays, who reads the book, who comes to church. To me, that's an authentic Christian. Uh, as true Christians today, we have no reason to live like those who have no hope. We have no reason. There's no excuse for us to live that way. Uh, we know how the story all ends, Okay? We, we know what is waiting for us on the other side. We know how the things of the prophets of old all turned out. We've already are reading what they, have, what they have spoke about. And today, through the love of God and the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we know how things are going to turn out in the future. Listen, we understand that this world is not our home. That we are not to fear the same things that the world fears. Uh, we're not to be hopeless. We don't mourn like those with no hope. We, don't, we do not live like the rest of the world lives without any hope. Jesus Christ, give each and every soul in this room, each and every soul who says yes to his, to his love, he gives you Hope. Hope of what? Hope of a better tomorrow? Maybe. But you know where the real hope is, is that the one day, for me the real hope lies, is that as one day there will be no more tears. One day that my struggles, my fight here on earth will be done. That's, what I'm, that's where I put my hope in. And I will hope, my hope lies in that once that's done, I won't have to experience a second death. Okay, I'm going to be in heaven. The Bible, Paul tells us that if we're absent from the body, we're present with the Lord. That's where we'll be. Lots of debate in the Revelation. Okay, well, who's coming back with Jesus? I don't know where anybody's going, but if I listen to Paul, wherever Jesus is, that's where I'm going to be. Absent from the body is present with the Lord. So if he's hanging out at the, at the Holy Bean you know, coffee shop up there in heaven, that's where I'll probably be. If he's, uh, you know, if he's down here taking care of business, I hope that I'll be down here watching him do it because I want to be in his presence. That's my hope. 24-7, I want to be in his presence. I want to feel him there without, listen to me, without having that sinful nature that I wear, having that battle going on inside of me of what's right and what's good. This is going to be completely void of all that. To me, that's what I hope for. It's what I long for. And I hope you do 
the same. I'm not going to live my life in fear that coronavirus is going to take me or my family. Sorry, I'm not even going to live in fear that he's going to take one of you. Okay? We don't live in fear. We live with hope. We, live, we, 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 we become hope. That, I mean, just uh, fear and hopelessness just has too many, too many uh, little fingers that wreck everything else. And that's why I believe that we're told to hope in all things. You know, we're told to hope. We're told to live as people who have hope. And so today I hope that you have hope. And uh, this morning what I want to do right away, because the note said to, is light the hope candle from yesterday. Today, we're going to talk about the second week of Advent. And I don't know, wherever denominations are, I try to put a little bit of all this in here, just because people have know it. I don't really know it that much. But uh, it's a week, of, week two is a week of preparation. Um, or some call it a week of waiting. It, others call it a week of prophecy. And so that's the word I will want to use this morning, is a week of prophecy. And I, and I want to tell you why I like that, is uh, basically the Old Testament and New Testament both is full of prophets speaking. And today in 2021, we can see pretty clear that the prophets of old that, that were speaking in the Old Testament about the returning of the Messiah and all these things. I think I read some of this last week, 440 prophets about the Messiah have been fulfilled to this day. Isn't that awesome? <clears throat> They've been fulfilled. And what, why is that important to me? Is because Jesus, Matthew, the apostles before, and John, we can't leave out John, have left some prophecy yet to come. So if I can see how the prophecies of yesterday have come to pass, here's, here's where Here's where last week's message comes in place. Because now I can hope that the rest are going to come and pass. Why wouldn't they? If all the other things that the prophet said have come to pass, why wouldn't the, these the next things come to pass? Why wouldn't they happen? And here's my question is then, why don't we live like they're going to happen? And we know they're going to happen. And we look forward to them happening. One of the saddest things, Joel and I first got saved. We're in the ministry trying to figure out what we're doing. And we were dealing with some, some LDS um, elders. Called themselves elders, but they were just kids. Right? They were just kids. And, and something was said about, Ooh, I can't wait for the second coming. I wish that the Lord would come back today. You know how you can be when you're first saved? You get a little zealous. And these kids were like, Ooh, not me, man. I still got some things I got to do. Like, oh, oh, no, I ain't got nothing to do, okay, because I'm doing it, I've done it. The book says that I have got nothing to do except believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and then I'll be saved. And then, I, I mean, I don't know, I'm ready. You know why I'm ready? It's because of, of what was prophesied is what's to come. <clears throat> the word prophecy is simple. It's a meaning, it, uh, it's a statement that, some, that something will happen in the future. Pretty, pretty, pretty easy. Um, it's the power, here the prophet has the power or the ability to know what will happen in the future. Now I want us to beware today of the word prophet. It seems that on the internet and in my, in my email and, and stuff, there's lots of people who claim to be a prophet. Lots of people who claim to have prophecy. To... Uh, to, uh, to know things that's going to happen in the future. And I think we want to be extremely careful about who we listen to and what they're saying. And if you're someone here today who thinks that, whew, maybe I'm a prophet, listen to me. The Old Testament says that if you, are, if you claim to be a prophet and you speak something forth and it doesn't come to pass, you're a liar. Okay? There's lots of people who claim to be prophets, who we listen to, who we, we get ourselves all wrapped up in, who are lying to us, who are trying to lead us astray. Listen, I believe that Jesus said that, uh, you know what, we had the prophets of the old, 
And today we have Jesus. He came and spoke to us. We want to be very careful, very cautious, when someone comes to us with the title, most times self-proclaimed title, of prophet or apostle or something like this. We want to be careful. Because, because what we need to know about tomorrow has already been spoke about. It's already been prophesied. We know how this ends. That's where the debate comes. That's where, the, that's where so much fear comes from. It's so many of us. We know how this story ends. And listen, if you're here today and you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I just got to tell you this. You win. You win. That's how it ends. You win. Got to be careful with prophets of today. And staying with week two, we come back to think of these, the, the people of Israel who were extremely hopeless, man. They were, they were in a bad way. They were being torn from their country. They were being, having their uh, country divided in half. And pretty soon, there just won't be a country at all. They'll all be enslaved. They will all be enslaved. They will all be, uh, you know, under somebody else's rule. It's kind of scary because Samuel, who we talked about a little bit today, Samuel kind of told them that this might happen. If you got a king, God wants to be our king. God should be our king. Woo, no, I want to be like the Brits. That's what we keep saying today, isn't it? I've never seen a country who's chasing so hard to become like another country who has fallen so far from God that it's scary. Ooh, we want to be like the British. We want to be like the British so much, we even put little British turn circles in our streets for crying out loud. They're probably a really good idea, but from where they come from, I just shut it down, you know? I hate them. <laughs> Let's, uh, a prophecy for today, today's passage. Got a couple of them. One would be, Therefore, the Lord himself in Isaiah 7, 14 will give you a sign. See, the virgin will conceive, have a son, and name him Emmanuel. We can jump forward. This is proving my point a minute. We can jump forward, and we can see that in Matthew 1, 18. It's a little long, but I'll read it anyways if we can. Uh, in verses uh, 18 through 25 in chapter 1 of Matthew, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with the child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that, is, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son... And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. In verse 22, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Verse 24, when Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. It happened. It happened. Just like the prophet said it would happen. 700 years before it happened. 700 years. Isaiah spoke about this 700 years. Look at, look at a little, we could go a little, a little closer maybe. Um, ooh, a little closer. Maybe I didn't put that one in here. You know, in Micah, it tells us, in Micah, where am I at in Micah? In Micah, it says that uh, you are small among the clans of Judah in Micah 5, 2. One will come from you to be a ruler over Israel from me. His origin is from iniquity, from the ancient times. And in Micah 3, 1, it says, Behold, I send a messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. In him you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. You see, Micah, 
Okay, Micah was like 400 years before Christ. He said, ooh, you're going to come to this nowhere town. Nowhere town is where the Savior is going to be born at. And then they talked about having a messenger come beforehand. The, the messenger that come beforehand is in Isaiah uh, 40, in verses 3 and 5. You see that too. He was saying, prepare the way for the Lord of the wilderness. Make a straight highway for our God in the desert. Every valley will be lifted up. Every mountain will be, will, uh, and hill will be leveled. The uneven ground will become smooth and the rough places in the plain. And in verse 5, And the glory of the Lord will appear, and all humanity together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. All this stuff was spoken about, and it happened. It happened just the way it said it, it was going to happen. And we can explain it away. We can say it's a myth. We can say, say whatever we want. But I believe it was wrote down, copied down, and then happened. Um, we see the whole thing about the, uh, oh man, we see the whole deal of, about the messenger come. We've seen that in John the Baptist, who, who's, uh, who, you know, uh, who, who said in, verse, in Matthew um, chapter 3, verse, um, I don't know, just chapter 3, it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. A, uh, for, for this he who it has spoken of by the prophets Isaiah, when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path right. When John the Baptist came. All these things happened. They said it was going to happen, and then it happened. Now if you remember when Jesus was, was, walked, was doing his ministry, and everybody was wanting signs and wonders, right? We want signs and wonders even today. Well, what are the signs? What is the wonders? What is this? What is that? You know, I think that we can put a good case together that, 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 that Israel had all the signs they needed. It was here. And they missed it. Now, we, can, we talked about this morning ooh, how they had their eyes blinded to it, all this stuff. I, I get all that. But you know what? They missed it. They missed it. They missed the Messiah who, w who was to come and to set their people free. Who was to come and set everything right. They missed it. Now I understand why they had to do that because he had to die. If everybody would have embraced him, wouldn't they, wouldn't they put a crown on his head and made him the king of Judah or whatever? So they, this had to kind of happen. But, but my question is, is it, are, are, and I mentioned this a minute ago, are we missing are we missing it? See, today I'm not here wanting to celebrate, wanting to celebrate the prophets, a time of waiting, a time of preparation, and all this for a Messiah who's already come. What I wanted us to do today is the book says he's going to come back. The book says he's going to come back, and that's what I'm waiting for. That's where my hope is lying today, is in his return. Is in his return. In, in Revelation 1, um, in chapter 1, verse 7, it says, Look, he's coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. So it is so, or so it is to be. Amen. The Lord's coming back. That's what we're waiting here for today, is his return. His return to, to uh, take his church home. Tons of debates and all this stuff. But I'm not going to get up here and preach like I know a whole bunch about how it's all going to come, come about. But I know, that, uh, I know that the book says it has to come about. Okay? And I know that when you talk about in Revelation, when we talk about, about him coming back and us being in heaven and doing these things, being in his presence, I know it talks about no more pain. It talks about no more tears. It talks about no more hurt talks about peace. It talks about tranquility. It talks about, about uh, worship. It talks about being with God. And uh, to me, that's what I'm hoping for. I long for today the signs. Uh, the signs scare you to death. When we read the seals in here, that don't sound like any fun at all. It, uh, you don't, <clears throat> but 
when it's all said and done, the smoke all clears, the, you know, I'm going to be, my hope is that I'm going to be in heaven with my Lord. And, and like I said, wherever he goes, I hope that's where I go. Whatever he's doing, I hope that's what I'm doing. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not expecting anything spectacular. I'm not expecting anything uh, special. Definitely don't think I got a whole bunch of crowns to spend. But you know what? I'm going to be in the presence of my Savior, my Creator. And uh, that's where my, my hope for. And so the second week of Advent, that's where, that's where I'm placing that's where I place my hope. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's what I'm preparing for. Everything that I do every day, well, maybe not everything. That would be a stretch. But most things that I try to do every day are to prepare me for that, that visit, that re, us being reunited, us, uh, me going home to paradise. There's one thing that I do know for sure is that there's two places. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And I know that the one way is really easy to get to. Okay? Going to hell is really easy. Missing all of this is really easy. Okay? But getting to heaven, there's only one way to do that. There's only one way to do that. And that's if we embrace Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And in Romans it tells us, that we have to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. And you have to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. In Romans, Paul tells us you're saved. Are you here today? Are you saved today? Have you done that? Are you willing to tell people, confess with my mouth? That doesn't mean that we go home and do it in our closet. Ooh, I'm a Christian. Are you willing to, uh, to tell somebody, that you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you willing to, to tell people that they too can be saved? A lot to be said about this. Because if we don't do these things, we only have one, one way to go. One place to go out of the two. And, and, and the thing about the two places that they have in common is that it's forever. And I, I don't know about you guys, but forever is a long, long time. It's a long time. I think we need to be sure of where we're putting our hope in. I think we need to be sure that we're understanding what the prophets were saying then. So we can understand what they're saying today. So we can hang on to that, what they're saying today. Listen, if we don't have anything to look forward to, what's this all about? Is this it? Is this what we got? I, I mean, listen, if this is all we got, this is it. What does this thing say, man? I might as well eat, drink, and be merry. I might as well, I might as well go and continue to do the things that I liked doing. I, did, I had to learn to like this. Well, some of you have to do that. Isn't it a maturing process? I had to learn this. It's easy for me to, to go down to the other side, have a burger and a beer. If this is all we got, why not? Why shouldn't I fulfill my bucket list? Why should I? Why shouldn't I? What am I doing here? What are we doing giving our time, our money, our hearts to something? If this is it, I don't believe this is it. I don't believe the words of the book are saying this is it. What's fixing to happen, what we celebrate is Christmas. I'm not debating the day, all this, whether we should sing happy birthday, not, whatever. Everybody's got to work all that out themselves. But it's got to get worked out. You've got to have it make a decision. And I really speak to the young people today. Is this a decision... That, that we make and then, and then, listen, we just can't say, oh, Jesus, come into my heart and then bingo, everything's great. 
You say, Jesus, come into my heart, and then you've got to start seeking. Understand who he is. I spend so much time in the Old Testament because you will never understand who Jesus Christ is until we understand who God is. We've got to... You know, in Matthew, it tells us that if we seek first the kingdom of heaven, all the things that we think we want, our food, our shelter, our jobs, all these things will come to you. He'll give them to you. He will provide for you once we start seeking His face. I know for one thing, I am not the same Christian today that I was 19 years ago. Okay? As a matter of fact, I'm not the same Christian today that I was 10 years ago. I'm not the same Christian today that I was even last year. Okay? Because I think the Lord helps me grow. He helps me mature. He helps me see things differently. He helps me understand that it doesn't matter if it's the, the Catholic, the Lutheran, or whoever put this Advent thing together. Just because they did it didn't make it bad. You know, which I thought for a long time. You know, the whole Advent season come about in the Catholicism in the 4th century. It was a form to prepare somebody for baptism. It was in about the 6th century that they turned it into the candle lighting ritual, into the remember, remembrance thing. It's got a whole history. Today, I would want to encourage all of us to understand what the prophets are. And then, to be patient. To be patient. The people in, 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 in uh, Isaiah's time, in Malachi's time, and that were given all these prophets, they never realized what you and I realized. They never seen those dreams. Remember Moses? He didn't get to enter into the promised land. He entered into the promised land in a, in a gunny sack. Full, you know, and he was full of bones. He didn't get to do it. But you know what? Here, what I do believe is that, is that one of their ancestors did realize the problem or realize the, the, the Lord. Just like our ancestors will realize the Lord. We've got to wait. Okay? Stop listening to wackos, man. If people are telling us anything that's different from here, don't listen to them. What I got into the habit of doing, if they introduce themselves to me as, as Prophet Marco or, or Apostle Ben, I'm done. Okay, I'm done. I don't. I don't. I know it shouldn't be that way. I'm probably find out one day the same thing about the candle lighting ceremony. Hey, maybe I should have listened, but I'm not going to right now, because because the prophets have spoken, and now I'm waiting. I'm hoping. I'm preparing for when that time comes. You know, and that doesn't mean we don't do nothing, as we've been speaking a lot, a lot throughout the months. Man, Jude 23 tells us exactly what we're doing while we're preparing, while we're waiting, while we're hoping. And that is we snatch as many unbelievers as we can. We should be witnessing to our neighbors. We should be telling our friends. We should be inviting people to come to church. We should be inviting people to come and hear about the Savior who loves them. Who's got just as big a plan for their lives as he does ours. That's what we should be doing, is sharing the gospel and waiting and waiting and get ready to celebrate, get ready to one day when we take our last breath, we're in heaven. You're going to hear those words, well done. I hope that this next week that, again, that we, well, what did the prophets say? We'll look it up. It's in Start on page one in the Old Testament. Start reading, man. You'll, you can't write them all down. They're, they're just so numerous. Okay? And then wait. And then hope. Hope. I hope. I don't hope that this is all true. My hope is I just really hope it goes quicker. Would you come and light up the prophecy candle for us, please? I got one, bought one of these because so the torch wasn't. Oh. Torch was well, I was afraid it would. <laughs> um, no, I don't. Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. Thank you.
everything that this next month is representing to me. You guys have your own deal. It's not about the tree, not about the stockings being stuffed. However, I am a medium, size medium, just in case. Okay, what it is really all about me is leading up to Easter. That sounds really crazy. What do you mean leading up to Easter? Well, if we don't have Jesus being born, he can't live, he can't teach, he can't fulfill the law, and he can't die for me. Have to have his birth. We have to have this time. And people, I think we, we can, however you want to do it. If some people think, I ain't commercializing it, well then be a tightwad. It, it doesn't matter. Okay? It isn't about that. But what it is about is it's about the birth of our Savior who come into this world just the way the people of old said he would. And he left this world just the way the people of old said he would. And I believe he's going to come back just the way for us today the people of old said he would. That's where my hope lies. Bow your heads, please. Father God, we do thank you today for your grace, your mercy. I thank you for having this all planned out. You've given us again, Lord, no reason to miss this. You have given us no reason not to uh, get this right. We have no reason today with what we have to, to, to miss the second coming. We have no reason to, to not understand what, you, what, what you're explaining to us to do while we're waiting for the second coming. And, and Father, forgive us for, for sometimes trying to make it what it's not, trying to complicate it, or maybe even make it too simple. But, but you've told us it's all here. Open the, the eyes of our hearts. Open the, the ears of our, of our, of our to, so we can hear, so we can see, so we can understand. And Father, give us courage and wisdom as we, uh, as we do work this out, as we do wait on you, as we wait for you to come back and, and, to, and to make all this right. Um, Father, we... We, we just need you. We need your grace so much more today than we've ever had. We need your mercy so much more. We, need your, uh, we just need your peace, Father, that surpasses all understanding today and so, and, and so much more today than before. So, Lord, I love your people. I pray that you will take good care of them, that you will speak to them in mighty ways this week, that you will use them to do things that, are, that will be wrote about in the epistles in heaven and, and one day we'll, we'll be able to read about. I pray, Father, that you would use us all in, in a mighty way to, uh, to further your kingdom and to reach those who don't know you to give them an opportunity to sit at the throne at, at, at your feet on, at, uh, in, in heaven one day. So I love you, Lord. I love these people. I place them in your tender care, giving them unquenchable thirst to be in your word and to just to be in your presence. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.